Welcome back to another Instant Reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. Joining me once again is Richie Schneider. Today we are talking about the latest transfer out of the program, offensive lineman Cedrice Pallian. Uh, I think he's been here two years now. Just announced that he is entering the portal. Uh, Richie, what does this mean for the team next year? Because he was a guy who I believe started last year at one point, right? Yeah. Um, actually, over the past two years, he appeared in 20 games, which I'm quote me if I'm wrong, but uh, I think that's every single game over the past two years. Um, he started in nine of those games at left guard. He was kind of in and out, uh, depending on injuries, depending on everything. Um, it, it wasn't a good offensive line. I think we all kind of knew that. Uh, he was just more of a plug and play guy. I think Greg kind of took him, what, two weeks into his uh, tenure at Rutgers the second time around. Yeah. Got him on campus, took him and was like, hey, maybe I can get this guy to this Juco guy to fill in for a year or two so I can develop a couple dudes. Um, they've obviously done that. Uh, I don't think he the writing was kind of on the wall that he wasn't going to be a player at guard this year, pending health with everybody, obviously. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of ironic, too, because I was looking back at my depth chart prediction for uh, spring game and I'm like, oh, where the hell did I have him? And I'm like, oh, I, I didn't have him. on that. <laughs> so, I mean, you could say I'm predicting the future a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think a lot of people shouldn't be really too shocked by this one. Yeah, I think the writing was on the wall for a lot of the, uh-huh. the offensive linemen in the program when we took four transfers and we took yeah. seven high schoolers, right? Yep. Some, so some we, knew that, amount. we knew that the thinning was coming. Uh, and this is, I think, the second guy who's left this spring, mm-hmm. if I'm correct. I think there's... Yeah, um, I believe so. I have that list in front of me. Uh, I don't even remember who left. Rosso, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yep. I don't remember when Matt Trace Rosso. left, but... Uh, actually, I think he did leave um after the season as well gotcha so do you see do you see more people leaving uh, around the time of the spring game or before the spring game do you think this is just a process that'll continue to to kind of see it work its way through yeah i think it's only a matter of time they got to cut i think if if my scholarship chart is correct which it's obviously it's unofficial so it's hard to like balance everything especially with chiano math with that's like two plus two equals fish and stuff like that but uh <laughs> yeah no they're definitely going to cut some more weight i think i think offensive line especially um you don't bring in seven freshmen and four like you said four transfers unless you're the guys there aren't doing their job so i mean you'll, you'll lose some weight there i think there'll be a couple a uh, couple other positions and i'll i'm expecting a couple guys to just enter um defensive line's got a ton of young dudes I could see one of them getting upset because they're not getting playing time or something like that, especially with the way the portal works. Um, I'm sure schools are, I'm not going to say they're not tampering, but there's definitely tampering involved. Um, so I'm sure schools are going to reach out to kids and be like, Hey, like we know you're not playing there. You want to come over here and start like stupid shit like that. Or you back channel a little bit, kind of like what Syracuse did with Elijah Clark and do some chestnut and Hey, you're best friends. You guys can talk like, but yeah, yep. there's going to be, there's going to be more, some more shedding of uh of the weight on this roster where I, my best guess is probably in the trenches, maybe even receiver. There's a ton of receivers here um, at Rutgers and it's, it's only a matter of time. Like until some of these guys aren't just, they're going to notice they're not playing at all. Yeah, no, I mean, it's also a numbers game. We took two transfers in at receiver. We've mm-hmm. taken a, a bunch of this past two recruiting classes um, and the production has been great on the field. So I think there might be a handful of guys that naturally see their way out. Um, mm-hmm. But speaking of transfers, do you see any any more transfers coming in prior to the start of the 2022 season? Yeah, I, there. It, 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 there's no secret. They need a linebacker badly. Um, these guys are extremely young. I think uh, I had the whole depth chart pulled up before, but uh, among the whole group, they have, what, one senior in uh, Deion Jennings? That's about it. And I don't even know if he's a senior mm-hmm. technically because the whole eligibility thing is all out of whack with the COVID year. Um yeah, and, and he's not really producing either. So it's it seems like Tyreen Powell has one of those spots locked down. I want to say they're probably going to run a lot, of, a lot of nickel, and it's going to be mostly two linebacker sets. But your other linebacker is going to be either a redshirt freshman in Benton or a true freshman in Walker. So you, you kind of need that veteran presence there. Um, maybe just a surefire tackler, someone that could just – you could throw in there, and it's almost like what we were just talking about before, the plug-and-play. You just need a plug-and-play guy that can come in for a year – be a stopgap until Walker or Benton can take that next leap to the next level. 
Yeah, for sure. And that was a guy that just from watching the portal, or not a guy, the position just from watching the portal, we followed a ton of linebackers and didn't really have any that worked out. We even offered a couple. That's probably the only position group we totally struck out on that we actually made offers to, unless you're counting kicker with uh, Chad Ryland, uh, which I'm not really, but. That was an odd one. That was a strange one, but I think he's he's going to be really good for Maryland. Uh, that's yeah. the type of position that could, you know, that could win you a game really yeah. realistically. You know, with how Rutgers played last year, they they weren't attempting any field goal beyond 40 yards unless it was, you know, life or death. And you can get a, a you know, a 50-yard attempt that you feel pretty good about late in the fourth quarter to get yourself three points. That could be the make or break uh, between a game. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's really kind of all we have on this one, guys. Richie, was there anything else that you wanted to, to kind of bring up regarding uh, Pallant? Um, not not really. I mean, like, like I said, I don't think he was going to really see the depth chart or even be a, on a two deep, I, I would argue. Ireland Brown kind of stepped up last season. He's a guy that's going to step up at guard. Uh, Brian Felter's kind of rotating in and out of guard, so he's another one. Uh, I'm trying to look at who else. Dunlap, pending health, obviously. Sutton will probably be a starter, pending health. Um, JD Dorenzo can play guard or tackle. Uh, there, there's a lot of options, so it's kind of not too surprising. Um, at the end of the day, like if you look at his recruitment, you kind of could tell what level he probably should have been on. And I think Greg thought he could strike gold a little bit. It backfires from time to time. Recruiting's not a perfect science. So here we are, two years down the line. He filled in whatever he needed to, and now you're looking for a. I guess you're not really looking. He's just he's going to be looking for a new school. Yep. You just got to take those swings. Sometimes you're not going to hit everything. That's why you can take 11 offensive linemen in one cycle and you really only hope yeah. it's probably half them to make an impact. But <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, the numbers game right now, it's, I think it's like 41 scholarship freshmen coming or freshmen or redshirt freshmen next year, this season. That's wild. It, that's a crazy stat, but we'll see. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in again and stay tuned because I'm sure there's more news breaking, especially with all this, basketball assistant coaching rumors we're hearing swirling around by the time yeah. you actually hear this this might be kind of old news at this point because it's sounding like two of our guys might be headed elsewhere so stay tuned we'll do a pod if there's any uh, shake up in the assistant coaching staff for Rutgers basketball um, and thanks for tuning in again this has been another episode of the Network Report podcast signing off <laughs>